What's up guys, another awesome Monday here at Kaplan Cycles. We have some special vis visitors today. We have, you recognize this guy here. This is a horsepower man, George Sajowski, we, uh, or Suds as we call him, because no one can pronounce his last name, right? <laughs> yeah, pretty right? much. And Cody, Cody Suds over there. He's, he's our, our right, Kenny's right hand man and sales manager here. Um, and they have a special visitor here. Some guy that he worked with for 50 years. So what was your name, sir? Steve McPhillips. Steve McPhillips. Steve is a former factory Penton racer. Uh, he worked at Moroni Holiday Davis since from 1970 to when? I don't want to get out of here. Almost 50 years. Of the 2012, something like that. Well, that's 42 years. It's quite a commitment. Yeah. How long have you, have you been in Moroni? I'm 30 now. 30 years. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. So um, come a little closer because the acoustics are horrible in here <laughs> on, that, on that camera. So show them that picture that you have there. 1972. Which one are you? You're that guy right there? John Penton. That's John Penton. And tell us about the bike. That was the first year they came out with the, the fiberglass gas tanks. We went out there to the, the dealer's show that he had. And because uh, we were a Husky dealer and a Penton dealer. Well, how come he had uh, Husky shirts on in the presence of John Penton? He probably didn't like that. Because <laughs> he, he was actually the importer for Oh, Husker he was? Oh, back. so he didn't mind. He was making money yeah. either way. Oh, yeah. Whether yeah. it said Penton or Husky, he was cashing in. Then, and then, then Husky came in. Took, you know, took it over, but he was the importer for both of those. That bike looks very familiar. I think we have the twin to it over here, don't we? You have, you have a 175 there. What size is that one? This is a 125. That's a 125. Those were called the six days, right? Yep, the six days. And the 175 was a jack piner. Yep. The 2 d was a hair scrambler. And the yep. 400 was the... The Mint 400. The Mint 400. That's this one right here. This is a very significant special bike. Tell us why. I rode one of these. And then, uh, the qualifiers for the ISDE, actually the ISDT back then is what it was. ISDT stands for, if you don't know, International Six Day Trials. This guy was one of the best riders in the world at that point. He represented the United States of America as a factory rider. I never made it there, but I was, I was an alternate that year. So if somebody got sick or hurt, we were in. We picked three riders out of each class, I was fourth. So, and that's at the national uh, or uh, was, international level? Yeah, yeah. yeah. How many years did you race as a pro? 74, 5, and 6. What was your best uh, victory in your in your eyes? Uh, well, I did a lot of enduros. I won the, the Jack Pine. Wow. In 75, I won the T Trophy. And what kind of bike? I was on a Husky. Husky Honor. What size? 400. Tell them what the Jack Pine Enduro is for the uninitiated. It's quite an event. It's a two day event, 250 miles a day for two days. In the woods. Through the, through the Guys, uh, if you're not a math major like me, uh, that's 500 miles in the woods <laughs> on a dirt bike, okay? In, in my age, age. <laughs> 15 miles on my back's going to hurt. How, how, how did you feel after 500 miles through the woods? I was in shape back then, so it didn't feel bad. Yeah, you just got up and <laughs> went back out, huh? Exactly. We bounced when we were kids. Yeah. <laughs> we don't anymore. So, uh, what, do you, what would you say the highlight of your career was? If you had to look back over it, what was the, the biggest uh, event you enjoyed? It was all fun. Qualify, running all the qualifiers around the United States and then travel and that was all the different riders you rode yeah, against yeah. world riders yeah. if you could do it over again would you change anything no 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 just wish I had a little more money though yeah <laughs> tell me all yeah. well the only other thing about racing if you want to make a pile of money in racing it's easy just start with a big pile yeah, you'll have a little pile. Yeah, we'll say that pile's gone. Nobody makes any money <laughs> racing, but it's it's an addiction. Back then, you basically had to pay your way. There was no even today. Most yeah. privateers are, are shelling out big money. If yeah. they don't have big money, you can't compete. There's no money in it. It's not like you're you know, making money. It's just all. So, what do you know about this mid 400 right here? I was pretty fast motorcycle in its day. This I, I, KTM uh, made that motor, right? Yes. It's not no longer socks. I see John's signature on there. He actually signed that. I see Did a date on there too. 2009, 10 years yeah. ago. John Penton himself. He's yeah. In, you could see him at Mid Ohio every year. He's out there. He was there this year, yes. Yeah, he's out there every year. You had him sign it? Uh, no, the previous owner okay. had him sign it. So, George. I'd, I'd like to get him to sign this picture with you. Know, that would be cool, right? Yeah. yeah. Bring it to Mid Ohio. We looked it up the other day. He's 96 now, something like that. And he's I think. still out 94. there. 94. 
George, show us this poster that you bought in today. This is a significant uh, Well, I brought piece. this in for you guys' museum. Um, as you know, back in the day, you know, I built a lot of XR 750s. We had multiple riders. You still, are you not building one this right I, now? Yeah, actually, I, I saw am. pictures. Yeah. You're building a brand new XR 750 from a pile of brand new NOS parts, right? Right, yeah. Pat actually found a complete uh, Harley engine kit because when you buy that motor, it doesn't come as a motor. You're yeah. just buying a box with a million pieces in it. And, part to put the motor together. Yeah, and nothing fits. You have to machine everything to fit it because basically what the race shop did is, is they knew that engine builders wanted to build it their way. They didn't want Harley to build it. So they gave you everything, oversized or undersized, and then you fit things accordingly and built it the way you wanted to. How's it coming? I saw the pile of boxes. Good. I've, I've started in. I've, I've got the cases done. That's it so far. You were saying that that NOS Harley kit requires a fair amount of machine. Like oh, sometimes a lot of machine. So, yeah. so it's not like for an average no. home user. Oh, it's me, not something you buy parts at SNS Parts and build it. This is factory stuff where you have to be a machinist and a yeah. lathe and all the knowledge. Dude, just on an oil pump, I'll spend two, three days just on an oil pump. Wow. Yeah. It takes what, a long time. What are, you, what are you doing with this one? The XR? Yeah. Well, I actually asked Pat because everybody asked me that because Pat bought it and he owns it. And I thought that he was going to put it in a chassis and maybe do some vintage racing, you know, himself. But um, I talked to him the other day, and he's like, eh, you know, maybe if somebody comes up with the right number, I'll sell it, you know, so. What's a motor like that worth? Now, after I build it, you would probably get twenty five, thirty thousand for it. It's brand new. So yeah. It's probably the only new one left, right? You know, are there well, any? actually, no, it's funny. Um, Pat took a video and put it on, I don't know, Twitter or Instagram or something, one of those things. I think Instagram. And, well, you know, you've heard of Jared Meese and Brian Smith, you know, former national champions, yeah. both of whom who used to ride for us. In fact, our last national championship, Jared Meese won for us, and that was, what was that, 2001, I think, on the 883s. But anyway, both Jared and Brian hit me up asking me to build, because they have motors they want built. And it's funny, because Jared chimes back after Brian said, yeah, build mine. And Jared's, because Brian now, I don't know if you know, signed the factory Harley-Davidson, and they have to ride the Harley Street nice. from Vance and Hines, you know? And so Jared's teasing him, saying, yeah, you better get one of them, Bill. <laughs> Did you see the XR70 hill climber? Yes, we were going to check that all out. Yeah, that's an early XR. That's a small painting shaft motor. Yeah, that's pretty cool. You one. said it was a board. It was, it was like an 800-something. It wasn't no longer a 750. Yeah, it? yeah, it's For, nothing to do. Sure. For me, in fashion. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to get to race that next year. Uh, you are going to your hill climb that once. And oh, I'll wow. have you there to get the thing tuned right, you know? Sure. And what, what, how about that? I have the... Horsepower man himself, the XR70 guru, turned spinning the wrenches when we send it on the hill climb. We're actually doing a winter hill climb. Um, I have to talk to the president of the, the Munson Hill Climb. We're doing a fundraiser for the Fallen okay. Rider okay. Fund, oh, the so. AMA oh, Injured cool. Riders Fund. And we're cool. going to, um, uh, hopefully, I'm going to be running that 750. If not, I'll be running a 500. Okay. So, cool. And this is in the snow? Yeah, we're gonna be we running it in the snow. So it's like a hooligan event. It's well, it, it is very much. It's gonna be a, a cold weather in the snow. Run what you brought, Frank. Ice spice. Didn't don't you have a guy who's got a kid? Uh, yeah, kid, you, yeah. He won it the one time. Let him know the event's coming up, middle of January. He did that on, on his Dyna, an O2 Dyna. I know, I saw it. It was fun. Yeah. That's a hundred horsepower yeah. Dyna. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Yep. He, he it's got some there. big old spikes in that. So show us that poster. What, what, what I did. Yeah. Mean? Well, this, this, camera. this was um, 2005. Um, as you can see, it's a Screaming Eagle wrecking crew. We were factory Harley, and that's Brian Smith. He was our rider at the time, um, and we were part of the Harley Davidson wrecking crew. So Harley was really putting a big effort into it, and we were supposed to be doing information sharing, blah, blah. Kenny Kubeth, if you notice, he's wearing the black leathers. He was the factory Harley rider, where the, the, the three here, Joe Cop, Jared Mees, and Brian, we were the Screaming Eagle satellite part of the Wrecking Crew. So you were turning the wrenches on the three silver jacket? No, one. just for Brian. Brian? Oh, yeah, okay. Jared wasn't riding for us anymore and Joe Cop was riding for someone else. But we were all part of the Harley Davidson Wrecking Crew. I see the Screaming Eagle Maroney's logo on yeah. the front right there. Yep, that's us. That's awesome. Yep. Who has that jacket now? Him probably? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah what a collectible. Man, I would love to have one of those. Yeah. Maybe yeah. you have a replica made by um, Vance and Leathers or something like that. I gotta have that one, the black one right there. Yeah, that was Kenny. That was. Uh, you think Vance could make a set like that? Probably. Oh, right? I'm sure. Yeah, absolutely. That'd be a primo for, uh, set for my Dyna S. <laughs> yeah, almost, yeah, these guys' leathers ain't gonna fit you, Ken. These are little guys. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're yeah. little jockeys. <laughs> so, so a couple of them together, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Joe Cop's the biggest one, and he's a little guy. <laughs> so, yeah, we have the 883, the XR750, 800 plus CC. 
in the, in the museum and some other really cool projects going on. We've got 18 bikes that came in as you see here today. Yeah, I saw I saw the video when these were dropped off too. That's pretty cool. The guy from Jersey, right? Yeah. And is there any uh, comments you'd like to make on the Penton uh, bikes down here? Is there anything that, that catches your eye? Yeah, they just work. Brings back a lot of memories. You have a what a 125 eight speed, right? No, I, I don't have any Penton. My sister has a 125. I got three Huskies. Okay. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. The eight speed was a Husky. Yeah. Guy he has talking of XR seven fifties. Okay, he has an XR seven fifty. What a truly amazing story with how he got it. You still have it? Oh yeah, no, 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 it's an iron. It's an iron XR, the first XR they made. Oh wow! Did he, did he uh, tune it for you? No, no, no. 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 Tell him about it. Tell him about the year. Tell him about how you got it. <laughs> I traded a set of pan heads for it. Nice. The guy didn't know what he had. He tells him that he's got, yeah, I got a Harley dirt bike up in my attic. I'll trade it because the guy didn't have no money to have his pants. Well, actually, no, he said, I have a dirt bike that nobody can tell me what it is. A Harley dirt bike. I said, well, next time you come up, you know, bring the case and set it all apart. But if I got the case in the trunk of my car, so I went out and I seen it. I knew exactly what it was. And he, uh, he needed a set of pan heads. So basically, I traded him all the parts for a set of pan heads. So you got an XR 750, which is probably worth 20 grand or more for a set of pan heads? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you wear your, you wear your this, this, was years, this was years ago, though. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's awesome. Congratulations, man. Yeah. If you ever decide you want to sell it, uh, call us. Or if you want to put it on display, we'd love to, to borrow it and put it on it's display. It's in my living room right now. Yeah, you can sell your apartment anytime soon. But if you are, we've got a great spot for it. Yeah. Is there anything else you'd like to add before we wrap up the video? No, I'm all good. I just wanted to come check you guys out, and he's been wanting to, yeah. he's been wanting to see the museum. So I figured I'd bring him out here. And, awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you for coming down and sharing your history of your ISDT yeah. conquest. Jordan, yeah. it was good to see you. Absolutely. Thanks for coming. Yeah. Stay it's tuned, great to see how well you guys are doing. We've got some killer bikes coming up today. We're going to test ride this KX500 Supermoto. I'll try to keep it off the street so I don't get arrested. Um, <laughs> we've got a SV650 track bike that we're going to be doing next a CR250 1984, and what else, Kenny? Oh, he's on, the, he's on the phone. We got a whole bunch of cool bikes coming your way. Stay tuned, as always. God bless America. Hey, good to see you. Thanks for coming by again. It's been a little while. I'm glad you're doing great here, Coco. It's been I like your little Christmas set. That's cute. I look good, right? We, I think, I think we all <laughs> you you guys missed the Christmas party. We should have told you we had a big event here this morning. What do you see the video? Well, yeah, we actually, had a little bit when more. we came in here, I saw all the cars, and then I saw you guys in costume. I'm like, what, do they got a party going on? Absolutely. <laughs> we gave the new guy one hell of a first day. I'll tell you. Absolutely. Oh, is that what it was, the new guy? Hey, we, we, even, we even made a Christmas video for the bike thieves. Oh, yeah. So, really? yeah, that'll be a lot of fun. Bike thieves. Yeah. A couple of them. Yeah, a <laughs> yeah. 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 little warning. If he comes back tomorrow, he's probably good. <laughs> if we can scare him away, we'll be good to go. Well, thanks for coming down to visit, and uh, always good to see you guys. All right. Man. God bless. Thanks.